We're back at an undisclosed location. I'm here with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator of the NRA's National Farms Museum. Phil, you've done it again. You, 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 you've, you've wowed me and, and our audience. I, we, we've been looking at this series of items from Theodore Roosevelt's home up in Sagamore, Sagamore Hills up in uh, Long Island, New York, and closed for renovations. So you've worked out a deal with the Park Service, and I'm just blown away with, with everything we've seen. We've seen art. We, we've seen collectibles. We've seen just true, just amazing items. So the flag we saw, the clothing, and also some incredible firearms. And, and we have another one today. So first of all, thank you for this, this really unique sneak peek here. And, and what do we have this week? Well, John, thanks again for having us on the show. Obviously, uh, we're very excited to be sharing uh, the news with the public that uh, the uh, National Park Service has loaned the National Firearms Museum over 100 objects from Sagamore Hill, Theodore Roosevelt's uh, National Historic Site in, uh, in Long Island, New York. Now, don't get me wrong, the, uh, the estate is still open to the public. Old Orchard, Theodore Jr.'s home, is still open, the museum that's up there. It's just the actual historic house itself right. is closed for about three years, they think, while they undergo a massive renovation project to uh, ensure the, uh, for the longevity of all the artifacts amongst them things like uh, like this rifle. Um, this is a, uh, a customized Springfield 1903 uh, rifle, uh, a rifle that you might say Theodore Roosevelt was responsible for uh, mm. bringing the other uh, country into the era of the smokeless powder, which had begun with the trap door, I mean with the uh, Craig Jorgensen, the 3040. Uh, but he, he liked that so much in Cuba uh, the 1903 Springfield was pretty much a, a copy of the Mauser uh, locking system uh, design that uh, that the Spanish had even been using against them in, in Cuba. But in 1909, uh, he decided to go to Africa for a year, and he took with him uh, his second eldest son, Kermit. Okay. And uh, Kermit and his father both had a brace of uh, custom 1903 Springfield Rifles. Uh, the President's was serial number 6000 and uh, Kermit's uh, is the one I'm holding here is 80, 85,000. Uh, for the true collectors at home that's a, uh, a 1908 barrel date, a January 1908 barrel date on the uh, on the muzzle of the gun. Uh, the uh, expedition started in uh, in March of 1909 and lasted for nearly a year. Uh, Kermit was very active in not only taking photographs of the expedition, uh, but keeping the records for the uh, Smithsonian Institution mm -hmm. for whom these animals were being uh, collected and also uh, proved himself quite adept at, at shooting as well. Uh, really enjoyed and loved shooting. And this wasn't the only trip that he went on with his dad like this. In 1915, he would accompany his father down the uh, down uh, Rio Roosevelt, what's now known as Rio Roosevelt, a uh, uh, headwaters of the Amazon into uncharted territory into the Amazon uh, wilderness, a, a, a trip that nearly cost the former president his life. Wow. Uh, and they lost one of the 95 Winchesters that they, or Winchester in 1895s on that trip. But this, uh, this Springfield, very interesting piece. Uh, because Roosevelt had one that was serial number 6,000, and uh, he loved shooting it. But after a while, the gun started to uh, not, not go as true as it had in the past. And when he decided to go to Africa, he wanted to take a number of Winchester lever actions in 405 caliber, what he would later call big medicine for lions. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to take those, so he, he wrote to Winchester saying, uh, Here's what I want. Uh, do a number of uh, Winchester 95s in uh, 30 caliber, 30 army, and do some in 405. And I want them all sighted and stocked to suit myself, quote unquote. Uh, so use my Springfield as a template. And he sent this Springfield 6000 back to Winchester, not to Springfield, but to Winchester, and said, Cut and sight and stock the others just like this one. And if you wouldn't mind, see what you can do about the accuracy of this gun. It seems to be off. Um, 
but I want all the other guns in the same caliber, same length, draw, drop, everything. Well, Winchester examined the gun, and it was uh, Springfield serial number 6000. It was made in the caliber that the original Springfields were made in, 30 uh, 3 30 caliber model in 1903. Today, the 30 government is 30 odd six, a very popular and well known yes. cartridge. That didn't come about for another couple of years uh, after the gun was made for him. Well, by the time he was ready to go to Africa, that round was available and he had been using it. And yes, although I don't want you to try this at home, <laughs> you can shoot 30 odd six out of a 3003 chamber. It's just not going to be wildly accurate. Okay. Uh, you can't do vice versa, but you can shoot .30-06 out of an 03 chamber. That was why the gun wasn't shooting true. Winchester let Roosevelt know this, said, you're shooting the wrong ammo. Now, do you want your new guns to be .30-06 or .303? He kept the .303 designation because that's what his Springfield was already he wanted everything to be that way. So this gun, uh, 1908 make, Kermit's, is 3003, as was Roosevelt, serial number 6000. All of the 1895s that they took, with the exceptions of the ones that went in 405 caliber. Wow. man who really knew his firearms and really appreciated them. Phil, tell us how to come and see this and these other wonderful treasures from Theodore Roosevelt and his estate. Feel free to come by the museum and see Kermit's rifle along with a number of others. Uh, hopefully starting in early June of 2012, Theodore Roosevelt, Trappings of an Icon, this Oval Office of the Summer White House, uh, is open from 9.30 to 5, seven days a week, free admission, plenty of free parking. We're located at the intersection of Interstate 66 and U.S. 50. If you can't visit us off the interstate, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com. Phil, thank you for another wonderful segment of the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.